Hey everyone, today on the Plastic Canvas I'm going to share my thoughts on painting purely as a passion versus painting minis just to get them done and on the board. Matt here from The Plastic Canvas, so welcome to the first episode of this new series that I'm putting together called My Thoughts on Miniature Painting. Now originally I tried to think of a more creative title than that, but I ended up sticking with it because it makes this series pretty self-explanatory. In each episode I'm going to share my thoughts on miniature painting. Now at the time of recording this first episode I've been painting for about two years or so and during that time I have thought things, noticed things, wondered things about this hobby of ours, things that have a positive impact and things that have a negative impact but I figure I'm not the only person that's thought these things so rather than having them kicking around up here I thought I might as well turn them into a video series in the hope that you can share your thoughts on each topic in the comments down below. So in each episode there's going to be a different topic that I'll be focusing on and we're going to kick it off with the most recent thing that I've been thinking about and that's painting purely as a passion versus painting minis just to get them done and down on the board. So when I was younger I was always doing something arty especially drawing and sketching. I didn't paint so much when I was younger because of the added investment you know you need to buy your paints, brushes, canvas, have a spot set up for it but drawing and sketching just pencil and paper and you're always good to go. And I carried that through into my first line of work. I initially became an architect, but then for various reasons, I moved away from that. And that was the point where I sort of lost that artistic outlet. But then I was always looking for a way to bring that back in. About five or six years ago, my wife and I and our close circle of friends, we started a board game group. We didn't start with any games that had miniatures in them, though. No, we started with, you know, Ticket to Ride, Dead of Winter, Sushi Go Hanabi, those sorts of games. But over time, as our collection grew, we started to get a couple of games with some miniatures in them. And one of the early ones that we got was Mansions of Madness 2nd Edition. And when we first got that game, that's when I started to look at some of these games with the minis and thinking, gee, it'd be really cool to paint these because that'd be something arty that I could do, but it's also going to make our board games look heaps better. And so that's going to, you know, a great way to tie these things together. So when I decided that I wanted to have a go at painting minis, I jumped online onto YouTube, watched heaps of videos of people painting minis, so I had a good idea of not only what I needed, but also the basic process that went into painting minis. So I went out and bought a starter set of paint, uh, some cheap brushes from the art store, and then I just set myself up on the end of the dining table. I painted under my bedside table lamp. It was a very, very basic start but I was off. So I started with Pandemic Reign of Cthulhu and this guy here is the very, very first mini that I ever painted. Now it's not the worst mini that I've ever seen painted, but it's still pretty average. But from the very first bit of paint that I put down on this guy, I was absolutely hooked. I loved painting right from the start. And so what I did is I spent a lot of time on each individual mini trying to make them as good as I could really spending a good bit of time to learn the techniques but just not trying to rush it at all not speeding through to try and get the minis out on the table really enjoying painting and that's kind of how I painted in the early stages so each mini really spending a good bit of time on them before starting painting, having a look over them, seeing which colours I wanted to use, what techniques I wanted to use, and really just trying to do the best job that I could because I was painting just because I loved it. It didn't matter how long it took. So then the next couple of games that I painted were Spectre Ops and Zombie 15. So here are some photos of minis from those games, and you can see that my skills are starting to progress but here I'm still spending a good bit of time on each mini, not rushing, just taking my time, enjoying painting. Zombie 15, because of the number of minis there, I did some speed painting there because there was either 100 or 101 minis altogether. I couldn't spend too long on them, but still I enjoyed the time 
pushing through each of them. Then I got onto Mansion of the Madness Second Edition, which was a game that I had been holding off on because at the time the, this was the game with the best minis. Looking back at it now, they're pretty average, but still this was the one that I was holding off on and just saving it for when my skills had built up a little bit. And so when I started on this game, I really, really was careful with each one. Still spent a really good amount of time on each one to do the best job that I could. I was still loving every single moment of painting and again it did not matter how long it took me to finish because I wanted to do the best job that I could. But while I was painting Manchester Madness along came Arcadia Quest Inferno which is one of the games that I have sitting here on the shelf and when I opened this and saw the minis this was when I realized oh these are good minis the ones that I have been painting uh, they're pretty average actually. So then I wanted to get onto Inferno as quick as I could, but I was still working on Mansions of Madness. So this is when I started to think, oh, maybe if I just paint this one and this one from Mansions of Madness, quickly get them done and just out of the way, then maybe I can come and paint this one, these one or two minis from Inferno. Then I could go back to Mansions, paint another one or two quickly, then come back and get onto some more minis from Inferno. So that's what I started to do. I started to quickly push through a couple of Mansions mini, some of the more basic ones, so that I could get onto Inferno, which is where I wanted to really be spending my time. So an interesting thing happened here, where the focus of my painting shifted from painting purely as a passion, which is what I started painting for, to now painting minis just to get them done and out of the way so that I could get onto the ones that I really wanted to be working on, which is not what I started painting for. I didn't start painting to pump through minis and just get them done so that they can be used out on the board. I started painting because I loved painting and I wanted that artistic outlet. So this is what I'm talking about as the focus of this video is painting purely as a passion versus painting minis just to get them done and out on the board. Because for me, when I started painting minis, it was because I loved painting and I wanted that artistic outlet. It wasn't just to have a sea of minis out on the board making the games look better. And I'm sure most of us got into miniature painting because we have some level of passion for it. But the tricky thing here is, is that while it's great to really work meticulously on a mini, build textures, build a lot of depth in the colour, make them look as good as you can, if you spend the amount of time on every single mini that it takes to do that, you will never finish a game, or at least it's going to take a very, very long time. And you simply cannot spend that much time on a single mini or else your list of games that are unpainted is just going to grow and grow and grow. And so I think it's really important to be able to find a bit of a balance between spending time on each mini, loving your painting, doing the best job that you can, but also pushing through some of them just to get them done because the skills that you learn by doing both of those approaches help with both sides, I think. So for me, when I started pushing through some of the minis, just getting them done quickly so that I could get onto the minis that I really wanted to be painting, that taught me things that I was never going to learn by working through each one meticulously. So it taught me how to highlight and shade more quickly, how to more quickly build textures. So I was just able to build my capacity to build those effects quite quickly. But the big thing that it showed me is that I didn't need to spend all the time in the world on a single mini to get it to a point that I was happy with, especially seeing as it's going to go into the middle of the table. See, when I was painting early on, I was seeing minis up really, really close all of the time. I could see every single little imperfection and I wanted to fix all of them as quickly as possible because I wanted it to be as good as it could be. But then once I started painting some minis a bit more quickly, when they went out on the table, I noticed that, hey, these are still looking good. I'm still really happy with how these look. And those little imperfections aren't seen when that mini is in the, on the board in the middle of the table and everyone's seeing it from the distance, you know, that they are by sitting around the edge. And so those were some really, really important things to learn. 
And here you can see some photos of the some of the Big Bang characters that I painted from Zombie Side. And with these guys, I did a one hour challenge with them. So I gave myself a one hour limit with each of them just to see what I could get done. And when I'd finished this, you know, one hour for each of them, I was really, really happy with how they looked. But I spent less time on these than what I would have before I was able to build my skills to paint more quickly and, you know, see that I didn't have to spend a huge amount of time on each one. So yeah, so for me, I think it's really important to be able to have that balance because you are going to learn skills by doing those two different approaches that you just simply aren't going to learn if you only do one of them. So then the tricky thing becomes, how do you choose which minis you're really going to focus on, spend a good bit of time, paint them as well as you can, and be really passionate about the end result, and which ones are you just going to do a good enough job on so that they can go out on the table and still look really good? Well, for me, there's a couple of different things that I look at. First of all, it's what game are these minis coming from? Is it a game that we are going to love, play heaps, and it's going to spend a lot of time out on the table? Or is it one that we're just going to bring out every now and then, and it doesn't matter if it has a really good paint job or not? So, for example, these two that are sitting here on the shelf, Arcadia Quest Inferno and Tainted Grail, these are games that we love and that spend a lot of time out on the table. So it was worth really spending some time on these because we're really invested in the games, we love them, they spend a lot of time out on the table. But a game like, say, Run, Fart or Die Reloaded, which you're looking at pictures of at the moment, this is one that while we do enjoy, it only comes out every few months. It's not one that we're as invested in. And so straight off the bat, it wasn't worth putting the time into them as what I did with Inferno. But then also what I do is I look at each individual mini within a game and look at how detailed is it? And also, how important is it towards the game? So, if we look here at Arcadia Quest Inferno, the minis that are sitting here, so the Overlord that is sitting here, this guy is a big, imposing character that comes out, is really, really tough to kill, much, much tougher than the smaller minions. And so I spent a lot of time working on him because I wanted the paint job that I did to match how imposing he is within the game. Plus also there's lots of different cool colours and textures so I really wanted to spend some time on him and do a really really good job. Whereas the minions that are down the front here, the, the harpies, they're smaller and less detailed have less of um, an effect or are, are less noticeable when they're out on the board. And so spending a lot of time on them wasn't as important. And so those are some of the things that I look for when I'm going to paint a mini to decide, is this one that I'm really going to spend some time on, do the best job that I can, or am I going to, you know, apply some of those techniques just to get through it a bit quicker so that I can get onto some of those other ones that are a bit more important. So how important is the game to us? How detailed is the mini? And how important is the mini towards the game? That's just what I look for um, when I go to paint a mini to decide, yeah, how much time I'm going to spend on it. But I think, yeah, it's really important to continue to paint as a passion because that's, I'm sure for most of us, why we got into painting minis. And I think you have to have at least that to some degree so that it's going to keep you motivated to keep on painting. But then also it is important to push through some minis to keep you going so that you are working through your collection, but also that teaches you skills that you know, spending a lot of time on each mini is not going to teach you. And like I said, it's also going to show you that you don't have to turn the world upside down on each mini for it to look good. They can still look good with less time spent on them, but just using the right techniques to do a good job still, but within a shorter time frame. So I'd love to hear your thoughts on this topic as well. Do you paint all of your minis meticulously as a work of art because you love painting? Or do you paint all of them really quickly, just get them done out on the board? Or do you find a bit of a balance in between? 
And if you do find that balance kind of like what I do, how do you work out which minis you're going to spend your time on and which ones are you just going to push through a bit quickly? So I really hope you enjoyed this video. Please give it a thumbs up if you did and hit the subscribe button if you haven't yet for future videos. I'll be doing more of these every now and then as I'm thinking of them. But thanks very much for stopping by. And yeah, please do leave a comment down below to share your thoughts on this topic as well. But until next time, this is Matt from The Plastic Canvas signing out. Happy painting, everyone. Cheers.